2022 was a tough year for Mercedes, but events over the winter break are making it seem like 2023 is going to be even harder. James Val's resignation as Mercedes' head of strategy was a massive blow to the team, and it seems like his exit might be causing problems in the factory. Helmut Marko has obviously had something to say about it, but this time there's probably truth to his words. Want to know why tensions are high at Mercedes? Then stick around for the rest of the video. James Val has done it all in Formula 1. Teams he's been a vital part of have won 9 Constructors titles and over 100 Grand Prix. He was responsible for the Braun GP race strategy, which was critical to the team's championship winning 2009 season. Then at Mercedes, he's been a key component of the team's domination of the sport from 2014 to 2021. He was the team's chief strategist from 2010 to 2022 as well. I'm just trying to paint the picture of how key he was to the team and how big his loss is to Mercedes. The move to the Williams F1 team did raise questions about them potentially becoming a Mercedes B team. Not quite to the level that Alpha Tauri is to Red Bull, but definitely on the way to that. The problem with the Mercedes B team theory is that it assumes that James moved to Williams because Mercedes wanted him to. That seems incredibly unlikely though. Why would they ask one of their most important team members to move team when they're at their weakest in 10 years? Val's own words seem to contradict that theory as well. I wouldn't consider it a mini Mercedes, Val said. Williams is an incredibly independent team in its own right, which has formed its own history, its own heritage. Williams is an entirely independent organization, and furthermore, it's one that my success is subject and dependent on me doing a good job there, and that has to be independent of Mercedes. Red Bull's Helmut Marko agrees, saying that the situation is actually the complete opposite, with the Austrian expressing his belief the Val's move has been made entirely independently by the British engineer. Marco said he has no fears about Williams being manoeuvred into a position of being a Mercedes B team. No, I have completely different information, he said. Val's went of his own accord, and so it is said, he even takes good technicians with him. My sources tell me that's why the mood at Mercedes is tense. You might be asking, what the hell does Helmut Marco know about the inner workings at Mercedes? Well, there are plenty of ways, and the most obvious one is that people talk. Plenty of people in the Red Bull factory used to work at Mercedes, and will still have friends there. Information gets out, and when you're having a bad time at work, you vent to your friends. Plenty of those Mercedes staff members will be venting to the Red Bull staff, and that information will make its way to Red Bull management one way or another. The part about Val's taking good technicians with him is especially interesting, and is a symptom of a problem that Mercedes have had since the 2021 season but we'll come back to that. First, let's see what else Marco had to say about Valz's exit. Asked whether Valz's departure could actually be seen as a weakening of the Mercedes team, Marco couldn't speculate. We'll see, he said, but I believe that Mercedes will be our biggest challenger when it comes to defending our title. Marco might be right, and Mercedes could be his team's biggest challengers next year, but with everything going on at Mercedes right now, that seems unlikely. No doubt it'll take some getting used to to not hearing vowels over the Mercedes team radio, but at Williams. Saying goodbye to such an important figure in the pit box would be a big loss for most teams. However, Mercedes apparently does not fear the future, although vowels is no longer part of it. Perhaps they should, but Toto Wolff definitely isn't letting it on. According to team boss Toto Wolff, Mercedes always takes into account the departure of a key figure within the organization. We had that many times that people have stepped up and they leave an open position behind them, or they join another team. And it's proof that we are developing and working with capable people. So there's no gap left behind. For many years, we've discussed succession planning in this area. He continued, We have an extremely talented team of strategists. They've flown the aeroplane now alone in the last six months. I feel very comfortable with the structure going forward, and not that suddenly a big weakness has been created. What Toto says is probably true. An organization as large as Mercedes will definitely have contingency plans in place for losing members of staff. That can work really well for 99% of the roles within a team, but for someone as key as James Vowles was to Mercedes, the transition is never going to be perfect, and there's no guarantee that whoever comes in will be anywhere near as good as James was. One team member departing with a few engineers is barely enough to raise the tensions of Mercedes and cause internal strife though. This is just a small part of a much larger movement though, which is seeing Mercedes team members depart the team en masse. James is the tip of the iceberg. He's a big enough figure that everyone hears about it, but behind him, Mercedes team factory members have been departing in number and at speed. This has been happening since the cost cap came in as well. 
The earliest example of this happening is the departure of a number of key Mercedes high-performance powertrain team members for Red Bull at the start of the 2021 season. Red Bull revealed Mercedes HPP's head of mechanical engineering Ben Hodgkinson will become Red Bull powertrain's new technical director, and ahead of the 2021 Spanish GP, Red Bull followed that up by announcing five more ex-Mercedes recruits. At the time, Toto Wolff didn't sound too worried. His words were, We have 900 or so employees there, and if you're fishing out 15 of those or so, it's really normal. That was only the start, though. In 2022, it emerged that F1 stalwart Phil Pru, who was most recently chief engineer at Mercedes engine division, had agreed to also join Red Bull to take a senior role within his powertrain project. In fact, by the time Phil Pru came to the team, Red Bull had hired around 50 more engineers from the Silver Arrows. It isn't just Red Bull, though. Aston Martin got involved as well, as Mercedes started bleeding staff members at a worrying rate. Mercedes' chief aerodynamicist, Eric Blandin, was taken by the Silverstone-based team. Blandin headed up aero teams at Red Bull from 2005 to 2009, Ferrari from 2010 to 11, and joined Mercedes to become their principal aerodynamicist in 2011, before being promoted a chief aerodynamicist in 2017. Obviously, he was another vital part of the success of Mercedes from 2014 to 2021, and he left another hole that needed filling. Again, these are just the top names. How many more left with them? Mercedes have a massive problem. When this many people start jumping ship, it destabilizes the whole operation. At some point, the quality and experience start to leach out of the team, and then it takes time to rebuild. Maybe after so many years of success, the Mercedes ship is finally sinking. No one wants to work in an environment that's constantly in flux, not knowing who's going to be at the desk next to you next week. You especially don't want to be in that situation when you know that those people who left are now getting paid far more than you are. Back in 2019, before the budget cap came in, Zach Brown estimated that Mercedes would have to lay off 200 staff members to try and reduce their spending. And that was to just get to the budget cap in 2021. What about the budget cap for 2023? There's an extra $10 million that needs saving in those two years. With the cost of living skyrocketing, staff members want to be paid more. But if Mercedes are laying off staff just to get to the cost cap, do you think they have the money to give out pay rises to match inflation? Definitely not. Mercedes staff members' wages are actually decreasing in real-world value, as everything they have to spend money on gets more expensive. And those staff members who do leave are going to be saying to their friends at Mercedes, Come with us, I got a 10% rise by moving. While James Val's exit on its own may not be causing tension at Mercedes, like Marco says, it is definitely part of the problem. Mercedes spent too much money, they flew too close to the sun, and like Icarus, their wings are burning and they're on their way back to Earth. When you work at a company, you get a feel for what is going on. The Mercedes staff members know that the team are taking a downturn, and they're jumping ship while there are bigger paychecks on offer at other teams. And who can blame them? Just existing is becoming more expensive every month, and they have families to feed. How far will this go? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, but wherever it ends up, it isn't going to be with world titles. Do you think Mercedes are in big trouble, or can they stop the bleeding? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below and on your way down. Don't forget to subscribe in preparation for the 2023 season. Until next time, drive safe and bye for now.